You are going to meet a superstar today. Yes, I said a superstar. And she's like all humble. No, no, no. But she is. Nancy Boren, welcome to uh, what? I, we don't have a name for this program yet. Eric Rhodes Live, I guess, is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Nancy, uh, Nancy, as you can see from the paintings behind her, is a fabulous artist. And she has a lot of different approaches and a lot of different styles. What are you going to do for us today, Nancy? Well, I'm going to do something I don't do very often. I thought I would try and experiment. I oh. have a forest interior in mind, and I've painted a lot of transparent colors that I have let dry, and I'm going to come back with the sky and cut into all of that with the branches and the sky holes and see how it turns out. Oh, that'll be fun. That's exciting. I'm so. painting trees right now and uh, suffering, so I'm anxious to learn. All right. Terrific. I'm here. Oh, I see your hand. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, I've brought you full screen. Uh, yeah. It's like talk to the hand. <laughs> does that, does that look good? Can you see everything? Yeah. It looks terrific. Thank you. So you're going to take uh it looks like you've kind of laid in. Um, tell, well, tell us what you've done and then what you're going to do here. Okay. This looks like kind of a crazy mess. But my idea was to do a very transparent dark layer. I did it a week ago, I let it dry, and then come back with the sky and cut in and create all these shapes of the trees with all the sky holes. And the nice thing about that is, since the layer underneath is dry, I can use a little color shaper, which is kind of like a miniature squeegee, it's real rubbery, and I can hopefully scrape through and then show the dark again to create some of the twigs. So this is kind oh, of an cool. experimental idea for me because this is a painting that I want to do larger. And so I thought I would try, this is a 12 by 16, thought I would try this before I attempted the larger one. I'll show you the colors. You're pretty that gutsy I lady to, to experiment in front of thousands of people. Well, you know, it's just a painting. <laughs> it's not that well. <laughs> I don't think I'm really that brave, but you know, I have made every mistake anybody can possibly make with painting. And so everyone needs to know that it doesn't just happen by magic. You really do have to try and fail sometimes to learn things. So here are the colors that I used to create this. I tried to pick all transparent colors or semi-transparent. I have olive green, viridian, quinacridone. I never know if I'm saying that right, magenta, Indian yellow, ultramarine, and transparent oxide brown, and alizarin. So okay, I just... Okay, so I see just off the top of my head, I see Holbein, Rembrandt, Gamblin, and uh, Jack Richardson brands. Yes. I use all okay. different brands of paint. I think all of them... I think we all do. Yeah, great things about them. I do dearly love the Rembrandt Transparent Oxide Brown. I know a lot of people. You use know, every brand. every once in a while, there's a there's a color that kind of becomes a staple for most artists. And that one, I don't know if that was started by Richard Schmidt or before that, but Richard uses Rembrandt Transparent Oxide Brown and Transparent Oxide Red in a lot yeah. of his underpaintings. And uh, yeah. as a result, it's kind of become a staple for everybody. Yes, he can do the red in such a beautiful way. To me, the red is a little stronger color and it's harder to use. So the brown is a reddish brown and the asphaltum is a yellowish brown, which is a really nice transparent color they make also. Now I have my reference photo here. These trees are on some property that my husband and I own where we're gonna build a retirement home. And so I have a real emotional attachment to this little piece of property. And this is a group of five trees off in the corner. And I think trees have a real dignity and a nobility and they're alive and they're very challenging. So I wasn't wanting to paint a super realistic portrait of this group of trees with this painting. I want to do it more designy, more arty maybe. I'm not quite sure what the right term would be. So we'll just kind of get started and see what happens here. now. You can see I have big sky holes lower down, and then some of this is just almost covered by twigs. So if you squint your eyes and look at that, it's almost a half tone. 
all those twigs in the sky. Mm -hmm. So if I start here with some of this, and if I use the palette knife and don't have a lot of paint, I can get some really nice texture because it's just picking up the texture of the canvas. And at the bottom, of course, it's going to be warmer. This is where the sun just went down behind these little trees. And what I try to tell students a lot of times is when you have a long vertical, and it's the same on a figure painting, if you have a long arm or a finger, I've got a long sky hole here. Instead of painting it with the form, try to paint across the form. If you go Why across, then you get more interesting edges. I see. Uh, same as painting a telephone pole or anything when you're out plein air painting. Sometimes it's really nice to do it that way instead of cutting right along the edge there. Okay. So, Hello, Poland and Canada and Alaska and uh, England. You're getting oh, an international, awesome. you're getting a good start here. That's awesome because I was born in Anchorage and I love Alaska so much. Wow. So hello, cool. Alaska. I, I was not a painter when I went to Alaska. I'm anxious to go back and I, I just go up and spend three or four weeks. I don't know how I can oh, find I know. that time. I have not painted in Alaska either. So I've question for you. <laughs> question for you. You put all this stuff in knowing you were going to have all these sky holes and, and yeah. lay, lay in stuff over sky. Why not just make a big sky and lay it over that instead of putting it in later? Well, I could, but you get good things when you do it both ways. If you put the sky in first and then you paint the trees, you're getting positive shapes over that. And when you come in like this with your negative shapes, you get a much more interesting, see how these twigs are starting to look really interesting instead of yeah. straight like they yeah. would have been had I yeah. used, had I done it the other way. And you can do a lot of paintings with a combination of painting positive and negative spaces. Well, you when, you paint, get... when you paint trees uh, and, and you paint a, you know, a forest area, if you look at it, I mean, it's just chaos. There's sticks and it twigs is. everywhere. But when we it paint is. them, we tend to make it a little too um, perfect. Well, you've got to focus on something. You've got to try to make sense out of it somehow. So you want to find your biggest shapes, of course, as always. And if you've got a big tree trunk, that helps a lot. And that's one reason I selected this big group of five trees as opposed to a distant tree with lots of foliage. It's yeah. really difficult for me to organize all that green foliage. Uh, it's just kind of something you have to train yourself to do to see the big shapes within that, uh, like everything else. But I've painted so many figure paintings in my life. That's kind of my first love. I love the texture you get when you lay that palette knife down. So it's very uneven. That's nice. Oh, I know. It's, 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 I have used palette knife. I, I like that a lot. And see, you're almost creating the feeling of the chaotic twigs in the yeah. background there. And all I did was do it with the knife. Yeah. So if you have a little successful area, <clears throat> then I need to remember that when I get up here where I have lots of twigs. Right. Hello, so Ireland. We'll <laughs> oh, hi, Ireland. <clears throat> That's someplace. I don't want to interrupt you, but I like to, I like to make sure everybody gets acknowledgement for being in here. Ireland, we need you to share this. So all your other Irish friends will pick it up. I would love to go to Ireland because some of my ancestors were from the Isle of Arran, which uh -huh. is between, kind of between Scotland and Ireland. And, and I have gone back in after I did this underpainting, and you can see where I have some guidelines I've put in for my trees so I wasn't struggling while I was here with you all trying to figure out where I was going to place things. And so... And then also these trees have some broken branches. As you can see, they're kind of stubs. Yeah. So I'm going to feel very free to extend those branches if I feel like the design warrants it. Or I'm going to use them as stubs. The stubs kind of give it a character. Oh, and I see I'm not thinking. 
and I have taken my orange too high. I was just thinking so that. I was wondering about that. <laughs> yes, yes, that's what happens when I talk when I should be painting. Well, see, people get really get upset with me, and I start telling them things about their paintings, so I have to just learn to, to be quiet. <laughs> so that's okay. No, if you see me going off in the wrong direction, say so. Well, I, you know, who, there, who's to say if it's the wrong direction, right? <laughs> I know. And I did want to point out something to people that I think is really inspirational. And that is this wonderful book called The Art of Landscape Painting in Oil Color by Sir Alfred East. <clears throat> A friend of mine found this in its original edition oh, 25 years ago when we were out in Salt Lake at a rare bookstore. And it's now been reprinted because it's been deemed culturally significant. Where do you get and it? There's lots of great. You can just order it on Amazon. For All like right. $14 or something. And there's lots of wonderful landscape books out there. Of course, the Richard Schmidt book is wonderful and Edgar Payne, so many. But it's interesting to see what this man said in 1910 about painting in England. And he has a lot of inspirational ideas besides practical advice. Here's one. Don't try to be sincere, but be so and be strong. I like that. <laughs> There's a difference between trying to be sincere and actually being sincere. So think about your sincere inspiration. What is it about this subject that moves you? <clears throat> and to me, it's the complexity and the dignity and the nobility of trees. Trees are just so fantastic and they are so inspirational and make so many people feel good. Uh, I think that a lot of people relate to that. And here's a really good quote. Your business is to express big thoughts, big ideas by big means. Now, I really like that a lot. But that, that puts a responsibility on me to be big. What is my big thought, my big idea, my big means? And right. one other quote, since we are painting sky, he has a whole chapter on the sky. And in this case... The sky is just back there. It's not a big, beautiful open sky. But at the same time, I think this is really important to remember. The essential truths of the sky are its immensity, its infinity, and its purity. So I'm going to try to remember that forever every time I paint a sky. So even these little bits I'm painting, I've got to think that this is this huge, wonderful arc coming over the whole earth. And the sun has gone down and there's millions of bits of reflected light hitting all those little dust beams in the air. And that's what's making this orange glow that's fading up here to this soft turquoise. So immensity, infinity, and purity. So hmm. I'm going to get some of my orange here. And I think this was really two little trees. I'm going to try to suggest that. And then I have another row of trees back there that I kind of want to leave because I want this to feel like you're inside of a forest. All right. And this, this little tree here, I have brought all the way down to the bottom and it's going off of the page. So that helps you feel like you're looking around that little tree in here. You don't have to clear everything out at the bottom. I could bring several more saplings down to the ground here and that would help give me this enclosed feeling of the interior. And the real trick to doing something with underpainting like this is to get the first layer dark enough. I have done things like this before, not of trees, and you don't get this dark enough. And then you put your lights on there and you realize, oh no, this is washed out. And maybe in this case, I have it almost too dark because this looks very colorful now. When I put the light here, this almost looks black in here. So that's why I wanted to do this 12 by 16 as an experiment for my larger piece. Uh, that would be one way I could kind of gauge uh, the values. And we all know values are more crucial than anything, more than color. And so, although color is the icing on the cake, Oops. 
So what are the so principles? You, when If you're laying in a sense of, of sunlight, you've started out with, looks from what I can tell here, with an orange, and then you've kind of gone to a light yellow ochre, and then you're kind of moving up towards a green and then the blue. Is that yeah. kind of? Yes, yes, because we've got the sunset, and where it's going through the twigs here, it's very kind of burnt sienna, orangey, yellow, golden. Then yeah. the sky went golden. And then finally at the top, it was a lovely greenish, bluish, turquoise color because all the warmth of that sun is going down behind that horizon. So sometime, somehow you have to translate all that that's going on just into what are these little strokes of paint that I'm going to put on here. And that's, and so very simply, that's kind of how, how I came up with that. And I've <clears throat> got this orange going way too high here, Eric. You didn't tell me that. I didn't see it. How, uh, how large will you paint if you're going to make this into a bigger painting? How big did you say? Yeah. Yeah. How big? I was thinking about some, not anything really giant. 20 by 24 is what I was thinking yeah. about. All right. So I've been uh, working on a 30 by 40 and it's just driving me nuts. It's so big every oh time. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, you're brave. I've done some 30 by 40s and I may be doing a 48 by 48 coming up, but oh, it gets big and you have to mix up so much more paint. You have to use a bigger brush and all kinds of things. So Jeff Wang, very... said, Jeff Wang said the other day, he said, small painting, big brush, big painting, small brush. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Well, I'm still trying to figure that out. Yeah, that's very interesting. I don't know quite what he means by that, I, but I'm sure he had something in mind. And then when well, you I, hit the little globs yeah. of paint, it does things that you're not anticipating, but it actually turns out looking good. Yeah, I like it. And, you know, who knows? I may, my mind may change as I go along because it frequently does. Something in the painting will suggest something to me that I hadn't really thought about but you do have to be kind of flexible. But when I get back now and squint my eyes, my gosh, it kind of looks like a sunset behind these trees. Yeah, <laughs> Am I crazy? Look that way. That's awesome. Yeah. That's you're exciting. even gonna, getting a sense of light hitting the ground just because you now know that that sun is back there. Yeah. And I kept this foreground a little bit lighter in value and I used more of my Indian yellow up here. Uh, in real life, this, is just all twigs and there's some light twigs in front of the darks. And so another tip for painting something like this, whether you're doing a field of grass or twigs, if you have lights, I mean darks, go ahead and put some in. Then you can come back, not with this color, but with some of your twigs and it looks good. If you paint your twig first and then you paint a little dark and another twig, you just end up with a mess. This will be much, much easier and it will look a lot better. All right. And in some of these places, of course, I want the color underneath to show through just because it makes it more interesting. Up here, I had a lot of yellow and that's okay. Who, maybe those are leaves blowing in the wind. Maybe those are birds. I don't know. I don't care. It's just some kind of atmosphere that might be there. But I do I want at the to. Sun, I was looking at the sunrise this morning and the tree, the sun was shining through the trees and it exploded with sky holes. Uh, much more mm -hmm. than I normally would notice. You know, it's going through every little, every little leaf. And that's kind of the effect it looks like there when you, when you lay it in like that. Well, my goal was to really save some of this dark stuff out here for all the twigs. And so, so far, I like those areas really well. Now, let's see, when I get up here, I want to try to keep, okay, I've got this. I don't want to lose where that branch is. I kind of put a few little things like a road map here. So I, I'm right up here because I like that one Y. Yeah. And now I kind of want to, and, and the great thing, okay, let me just go ahead and try this with my color shaper. Let's just try this now and see what I've got. Okay, cool. Because you I laid it up. So you laid it over dark. Now you'll be able to pull out the dark by, oh, that's very clever. Yeah, well, I don't, I sure didn't invent it. 
Well, I yeah, use one of those too, but I, I, um, I usually use it to remove something that I've screwed up. Right. I do that a lot, Eric. <laughs> I and I guess if you wanted a sharper edge, you could use the back of a brush or something, right? Yes, you could do that. And I'll show you something else that I use frequently All that right. really works good. Oh, no, here it is. I have so much stuff you're going to hear crashing. It's a piece of a squeegee blade, but it's not right. in the squeegee. Okay. And so these are awesome. They take the paint off like crazy, sometimes more than you want. Let's see what this does here. Well, when you have the white, the light over the dark, it may leave a little scum. So that may not be the best thing, but when you're just regularly painting and see, because this is pretty dry, I can clean that off with a little Gamsol and I have that nice color underneath. Yeah. That's, that's kind of the secret here. You got to let this dry underneath. And I did want to say too, that when I did this, I um, used Gamsol to thin the paint, but I also added some stand oil because this is a linseed oil that's been treated. Uh, but when you water your colors down a lot with Terp, Gamsol, paint thinner, you take all the binding out of the pigment and you want that film layer to be really solid. So if you put a little some kind of medium or oil back in there, you're adding oil to help keep the pigments bound together. So that's always a good thing. All right. Suspending okay. the pigments and oil. Yes. You don't want to take all of it away. Now I've got a nice skinny little sky hole right there. I like how rough this is looking. Um, we'll see. Okay. Now I'm not going to have very much paint on the back of my palette knife to attempt this. Oh, and of wow, course that I really can, works. And after I, yeah, and after I uh, get this done, I can come back with a brush and delineate some of these little twigs in areas that I think are really important. Um, but now if you squint your eyes, that area kind of looks like a half tone between the lightest of the sky and the trees, which is kind of kind of what I wanted. Yeah, and yet you don't have to render every branch. No, 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 no. I like this feeling. I think it's Richard Schmidt who says, I'm not painting these trees. I'm painting my experience of these trees. And I think that is just such a wonderful idea. Uh, if you want a perfect image, go take a picture of it and be done. But I want people to see how magical I felt like this little forest is. I have done whole skies, just teeny weeny weeny bit like, like this with a palette knife and putting more and more pigment on there. Of course, you've got to have a uh, canvas on here. This is a masonite board with oil primed linen canvas glued to okay. it with Miracle, which is what I usually use. I buy big rolls of canvas. Did you say you Miracle up. Muck is what you use yes. to adhere? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. Because it's archival and it works well. And, and then some of these little circles. I used my color shaper back when the paint was wet and I just put it on there and turn it in a circle. And you kind of end up with like a little sequin of light. So I hmm. was just trying to make different uh, kinds of texture that would be underneath and a lot of it will get covered up, but there will be little bits of interesting things, hopefully all along the way. And now here, see, I'm gonna probably cover that little guy up, but I need to create a branch here. And then as I stood there, a couple of weeks ago and looked at this forest scene, the tree branches up away. Let me get out a brush here. The tree branches that are away from the sunset, I could very clearly see a blue edge on the limbs. And I think in a lot of Sargent's watercolors, he very clearly shows the blue coming through on the edges. 
now there. There's Blue just a coming little through bit. on the edges of the branch. Yes, because because you know it's kind of an optical illusion when you look at something that's silhouetted against the light. The light sometimes creeps around the object. Yeah, like down here at the sunset, all these twigs, some of these need to be real red because the sunlight just turns them red. The light just is so strong it comes around. Well, maybe the sky, the coolness of the sky is so clear, it turns some of this bluish. I don't know. And of course, I wear glasses. My vision is not the greatest, Eric. <laughs> but I'm painting my experience of these trees. And so if I was seeing blue around some of these sky holes, then heck, that's what I was seeing. Hmm. So then once you start making some of the trees got some cooler bits and then of course I'm going to have more warm on the trunk down here because some of this light from the ground is coming up it kind of starts to get more and more interesting I think color wise so I'm going to try to just kind of leave that alone right now but I'm going to kind of clean some of this up so we're at about the 12 minute mark just so you have a feel for time okay okay well you know those paintings not going to be finished there's no way well, of course of course and uh let's see if i can get this big sky hole suggested here that would be nice and then everyone who writes about trees talks about paint them the way they grow so if you're painting it positively You've got your brush down here. Start at the bottom, paint it out the way it grows. And then you can even use the edge of your palette knife, of course, to make some very tiny, skinny little twigs out there. So there's lots of good advice and tips in the world for dealing with these really complex objects that are trees. And these trees are all alive. That's the amazing thing. And they don't care about COVID. Isn't that nice? <laughs> Something in the world is not concerned with that. They have, they're like living their own lives. And we just happen to run into them every so often. In the Lord of the Rings, the trees figure so much. The, the Mirkwood and then all the, the trees that are actually alive. And I was I've actually... I, I took a group to New Zealand and we were actually in the forest where they filmed oh. Lord of the Rings. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. How fantastic. I love that those books since I was a kid and that's, that's exciting. And I think that because I don't have as much light paint up here and I have it heavier down here, this light looks stronger, which is what I want it to do because of the sunset. And so now I think I need to, oh, I need to just meld the coolness of the sky and the warmth a little bit more. You know, so one of our guests here, Sheila, said she had cataract surgery in both eyes and it totally changed the colors that she was seeing. She went from warm to cool. My wife mm. said to me, you need to get your cataracts taken out because she said you make your paintings too warm. Uh, well, see, I have two cataracts too, but they're not bad enough to take off yet. So who knows yeah. what color this stuff really is? Yeah, I have no I idea. Finally got, I finally got permission to get mine cut out. So it's for years, it's been not bad enough, but finally got it. So I'm going to go in and get it done. Yeah, I've heard other artists almost be reluctant to get it done because they're happy with the way their paintings are going and their collectors really like them. And it's like, <laughs> oh my gosh, if I change this, what, what are we going to do? What if my paintings all look different? Nobody wants them. It's weird. Oh, well. Now, see, I think this is a mess. So I'm going to take that off. Oh, and see, see this, this is dry, but because you rub a little too hard, it still is going to come off. So that's yeah. okay. I can go back mm -hmm. with... Uh, some darker paint. I'll just mix up something here, whip up something real quick and put that back in. And then, you know, this trunk is too light. So I'm going to, I'll just go ahead. And these trunks have a darkness down in there between that the trunks. That, that to me looks like it's picking up reflected light. You know, that light that's hitting yeah. the ground and reflecting back up. 
Yeah, I just want to define a little bit. There were five trees here. Yeah. And so I picked a spot in one place. They're almost lined up like you've only got two trees because you got two here and three here. So I kind of moved to the side so you could kind of see bits of all of them. And so, of course, I'm thinking about when I do my larger painting, I'm going to have more space and I'll want to define some of this a little bit more so that I'll be able to show that I've got multiple trees here. They're really beautiful. And then you have to just keep squinting your eyes and seeing where your darks are the darkest. You look at all the value of the sky, then the value of this. Oh, and I did want to do this one thing real quickly here. There's a little bit of a green pasture over there. And I've got so much warm and brown and everything. I thought that looks nice. So I had mixed up a little green ahead of time. And this is an opaque color. And I don't, don't know if it's just right, but... That will kind of establish kind of where the ground is. And then some of this was coming through back here. Whenever you can have three shapes that are different sizes, that's good. So I like mama, papa, baby bear. So I have this papa bear green over here, and that's maybe mama bear and tiny baby bear. Really? And so anytime you lay down a big color mass, you want to have, you want to have it in three shapes. Well, it's helpful, you know, because huh. it's not totally isolated. I huh. always like to, I always say I'm not doing a painting of trees. My number one thing is I'm doing a painting and the painting has to be unified in my opinion. You know, everybody's opinion is different, but I like to have bits of colors repeated throughout, even if it's only teeny tiny. And there are some leaves that are coming across. This was in the late fall. So I could use some of that green up here. And of course I have Viridian in here, which is still looking really strong. I have some green down here. So I already had green in the underpainting and I want to keep using these same colors that I used in the underpainting to mix into these colors I'm using on the sky. So I did use some Indian yellow in my sky color. I want all this to be able to relate to each other. I don't want two totally different layers of paint. And then I'll probably use some cooler colors down here when I develop these twigs because they are totally in the shadow. And some of them are a very light color of stem anyway. And so they almost have kind of a lavender look. Like I put a little bit on this one. You know, sometimes wood looks very lavender when it's in the shadow, if it was kind right. of gray. and Right. So, uh, Okay, let's see, where are we? Okay, now let me look at the shape of these trees. See, this, this tree trunk looks very fat there. It really should not be like that. I, I think that looks ugly. So I'm just gonna barely cut this in a little bit. And it doesn't, you know, have to be perfect. Now I've got some of that stuff that looks like twigs back there. And maybe, Maybe what I need is to bring this back here, make this bottom look a little thicker. Okay, maybe that's okay. And then I have this one branch that's really nice and strong here. And let me see if I can get a little tiny, teeny tiny skinny branch with the edge of my palette knife here. I've just got a little bit of paint. You don't always know if you have the right amount until you try it on here and just laying it on like that that's almost not quite enough mm -hmm. it's really amazing how many different marks you can make with fairly simple tools but sometimes that is the best way to do skinny things don't try to do it all with a brush because it's see that didn't even show up it is just too difficult Nothing wrong with using a little bitty brush when you need a little tiny bit of preciseness. Well, uh. Uh. well I told you. <laughs> I don't hey really guys, know I what just I'm doing. posted in the comments. I just posted a link to Nancy's video, uh, so you can you can pick it up. Awesome. Well, well, this is this is really fantastic. I have. I've learned so much. It's interesting. You know, I've been, I've been around painters uh, constantly for 
you know, a couple of decades and every day I'm still picking up something new. You know, you'd think everybody's got it figured out in one way or another, but you know, I, right. I'm seeing things that you did today that I've never seen done before. Well, that's the beauty of painting. It can just stay with you your whole life. You can keep learning more and more things. You can paint more and more subjects. It is the activity that just never gets old. Yeah. It's really fabulous. Keeps you young. Yep, it does. Or it makes you old before your time. <laughs> I don't know which one it is. It depends on if you're painting a bunch of difficult trees, I guess. Oh, my goodness. This tree is the biggest one, and I really like having a big solid one here. So I want to be sure and let him be dominant over these others. So as I continue to develop this, I want his he, two branches up here to really stand out against this tree that was in the background. So I would carefully kind of figure out about how to do that. And then I'm gonna develop more small organized groups of these branches, I mean, of these little uh, leaves. And then I could even put some of them were out here. I could see how that could work. Um, I'll probably cover up some of this green, fix this. But I'm kind of excited because I, this is kind of the idea that I wanted uh, my painting to turn out with. And so it'll be interesting to try it on a bigger scale and uh, to kind of see how that happens and then to get back from it and kind of see what I think. And I can see that I want to change the shape of this branch because I like the way that is swooping there and I didn't do that very well up there. So um, do you want me to keep painting a little bit or are no. we about ready to go? I think we're about ready to go. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll quit then. I'll give it up. I'm back on camera so we can see you. A lot of people joined before they saw you in the beginning. Okay. Well, uh, should I turn the camera around or should I actually turn this around? Oh, I'm would you do, do me a favor is take the camera real close so we can see the texture real quick. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, down. It went down. Okay, let me take it off of the stand here. All right. Excuse me. How about that? Can you see? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Yeah, you can really see how the canvas is impacting how that paint lays. Right. You've got to use everything available to you, and that canvas is there for a reason. It's just fabulous if you treat it with a real light hand like that. Mm-hmm. Terrific. All right. Well, come on camera and say goodbye. Okay. Am I there? You are there. You did a terrific job. Okay. I'm impressed. Thank Thumbs you. up Thank and applause. You. I enjoyed it. Yeah, that was, it was really fun terrific. Being here today. Nancy, I've got your website up, nancyboren.com. I posted a link to your video in the comments section. Uh, but here is a picture of the video. This is obviously a different approach and different technique, but uh, you want to tell me just briefly about this video? Well, I kind of recreated one of my most popular paintings called Cimarron Solstice, and it was a girl jumping. That was my main idea. I wanted to do her in front of the sunset, so I came up with a real harmonious, warm, warm color scheme. And I wanted to create the feeling of jumping and movement. So I talk about that a lot in the video. Okay, cool. Well, thank you for being on today. It's a real pleasure. And uh, and uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to see each other and uh, shoot another video soon. And uh, it'll be sounds fun. Great. Yeah, that maybe people great. can post in a comment what kind of video they would want. That'd be terrific. Okay, perfect. And, and, and Nancy, uh, if and when you finish that painting, we would love to have you post it in the comments so that we can